Understanding material properties is certainly important, but most game assets also require complex color application to compensate for the relatively low amount of detail in the model itself. In order to suggest small and subtle surface details or color patterns and decals, we'll need to apply two-dimensional images, also called maps, to our geometry. For clarity, I'm going to be working with a brand new scene in this video that includes only a polygonal plane. I'll choose File, New Scene, then click on the Polygon Plane Shelf button. If we return to the Hypershade and select our Fong material, you'll notice a checkerbox icon next to each of the attributes we were working with in the last video. This checkerbox indicates that the attribute can receive a texture and doesn't need to be restricted to a single color or value. Let's click on the checkerbox next to the color attribute. You'll see that a new window now pops up with a list of different texture options that can be used to determine the color of our material. The window is labeled Create Render Node, which sounds pretty technical, but it just means that we're adding some extra information to our Fong material that will alter the way the geometry appears when it's displayed or rendered in the game engine. A node is just a piece of data that serves a specific function. For example, the Fong material is a node, and so is a polycube. All the nodes shown in this window create textures. Most of these textures are known as procedural textures, meaning that they're created within Maya to produce very specific visual effects. For example, a cloud, marble, or stucco pattern. But since these procedural texture effects are part of the Maya software package, we can't easily export them out of Maya and into a game engine. However, the file texture will allow us to feed an image from our computer into our Fong Materials color channel, and this file could also be used in a game engine. The built-in shaders for most game engines are a bit different than Maya's, but the texture map connections will still transfer into Unity and look very similar in the game engine. The image could be a photograph or digital creation saved in any of the standard image formats such as JPEG, Targa, TIFF, or PNG. I have a sample image on my desktop, so I'll click on File, then click on the folder icon to select my image from the File browser window and choose Open. A small sample of the image, or a thumbnail preview, will be generated for the file texture, and the color will also update on the Fong preview sphere and shader ball in the hypershade. Since I've connected the color texture to my default Fong material, I know that it's already applied to my geometry. But remember, if you have multiple Fong shaders in your scene, you can middle mouse drag them from the hypershade to apply them to the geometry. If the texture still isn't displaying on your object, you'll need to make sure that Textured Display is activated by clicking on the checkered sphere image in the camera view or hitting 6 on your keyboard. When the file texture node was created, a texture placement node was also created and connected. You can see the texture placement node next to the file node in the attribute editor. Maya has given it the default name Place 2D Texture 1. If we click on this tab, we'll be able to access attributes that adjust the scale and positioning of the texture map. For example, the Rotate Frame Attribute slider changes the orientation of the texture, and the Coverage Attributes determine how much of the material is being affected by the texture map. And remember that texture maps can be used to affect more than just the color of an object. I'll select our Fong shader again from the hypergraph and this time, I'm going to apply a texture to an attribute we haven't talked about yet. The Bump Mapping attribute alters the behavior of the surface normals of an object to create the appearance of bumps and wrinkles. When I click on the checker box next to the Bump Mapping attribute, choose File again, click on the File To tab, and then click on the folder icon, I can choose the map from my image browser. There isn't time in this course to explore how this texture was created, but this colorful image is called a normal map, and it can create the illusion of fine surface details on our models. For this type of map, we need to change the use as attribute to tangent space normals. With the normal map applied, this simple plane will appear to have much more geometry. And selecting the bump 2D1 node in the attribute editor and modifying the bump depth value will modify the intensity of the effect. But this effect does have its limitations. As we tumble around the plane, you'll notice that the silhouette is not affected by the bump map, so this effect is much more convincing when an object is viewed from straight on. As you can see, texture maps are a really powerful feature for enhancing the appearance of our models. But as we'll see in the next lesson, any object more complex than a plane will typically need some special preparation in order to receive a texture map correctly.